Don Singer case was not about the law, it was about politics right. and money and power. And so what you got here is corporate America is going to find a poor place where there ain't no press and no op much op not enough of a powerful opposition to stop them, and that's where they go dump their stuff. Are there anybody suing now over this issue yet, trying to stop this stuff? Well, it's, it's a little more difficult to say that. In, in his ruling, the judge ruled that, that that's a private company. Uh, it's been approved for you know, all of the approvals from a, ADM and, and the EPA, the EPA sign off. Right. Uh, specifies what type of materials are included and what type are not. Uh, they're calling this coal ash non hazardous. They're not called it hazardous. Well, that's because it was the way it has been classified right. up until now. Now, the Obama EPA, if I'm not mistaken, John, are moving to begin looking at regulating coal ash. Right. So See, the, the whole idea behind this was that Perry County could take it because it was a non-hazardous waste. As, a, but as established by the... By at, the established of by the, EPA uh, and ABDM, the very people who issued the permits. Now... When we went into the Emory River on December the 27th and took water samples, we found 300 times the allowable limits of arsenic in that water. We found uh, multiple heavy metals, mercury, things like this are all in that water. And each of those independently is considered a hazardous material. What they say, though, is that it's... Trace amount, trace amount leaves it in a in a non-toxic state, but trace amount is up. measured in a laboratory beaker. Right. We're talking about more debris collectively than both World Trade Towers when they came down. That much debris that is known to be toxic right. is coming to your county and being placed out here in this in this in this area where you have to farm fish. What I've said, what the, what I've said is it's in by volume, it's it's in trace amounts, small amounts. But thirty five thousand railroad cars of it adds up, you add up all those trace amounts. That's a hell of a lot of arsenic in there. You know, as a fish farmer what's your concern about the liners in this landfill? Well my understanding about the liner is they, they're, they're bragging that it's, uh, I've forgotten the village, but it's a uh, pretty thick liner material, so they, they, they're kind of confident about that. They're also quoting that site as being uh, Sumter Chalk and a limestone base in there and so forth, and ba basically impermeable. And uh, just like a natural lead coffin, almost. Uh, that may be a appropriate description of what it is, but uh, they're saying it's going to be the likelihood of ground penetration is very remote. Now, I I tend to think I, I know this country in here. This ground cracks. This ground cracks. It's in the uh, yeah. process of cracking. Twelve months. Out based on temperature and, and moisture. Uh, when they finish one of these cells and got it full, underneath there there's a constant like uh, flexing going on. Uh, I, I'm very concerned about water safety, yes. And it wouldn't just affect folks downstream from us, it permeates out. I, I don't know how far, and I don't know what the outcome is. I know for sure there's nothing to do about it. They came in when they bought that place and, and they they paid a well driller to drill 16 wells. There's 16 wells on a thousand acres that they say they can monitor, take periodic uh, water quality tests. Well, my point is when they get bad tests, well, you close the wells down, I guess, because there ain't nothing to do. All you know is just tell the folks don't drink water. Thank you. When the table gets messed up, all the, all the uh, test wells do is alert you that it's it's over. But uh, I, I I have no confidence in the liner. I have no confidence in the in the dirt. I have no confidence in this burrito wrap they call it. That's they're they're shipping it down here on these railroads. Well, we now the county commissioners have said 
we, I saw the AP store. I thought it was ridiculous piece of journalism. But, uh, had the picture of the county sure you saw the county commissioner holding the coal ash in his hand and said it'd be environmentally injustice not to bring it in here. Now, uh, I mean, I know people need jobs and the economy needs something, right? Uh, but obviously you said the longtime chair, y'all defeated him because he helped get this thing in here. Was there politics and money and payoffs going on, do you think, on, on that stuff? They promised, the landfill folk promised the county commission that if they would permit the place, they would give a dollar a ton tipping fee for every ton that came in there to the county. Now, I'm no legal scholar. I ain't even Raymond Burr or Matlock, but the way I look at the code of Alabama, the code of Alabama says it's against the law for a company to pay a tipping fee and it's against the law for an individual or a municipality or an entity to receive a tipping fee. So I challenge the whole tipping fee situation and it's referred to that way. A tipping fee is not a word, not a phrase that I'm just using or well, not that's that's in documentation. <laughs> so it's rocked along. I, I, I'm not accusing Judge Shassi of taking any money. Although I think Judge Shassi is a socialite in Montgomery, and there were some people in Montgomery that were tied with ADM. And, uh, a lot goes on at cocktail parties. There's more legal cases won by lawyers at cocktail parties than in the, in the courtroom ever. And we probably lost this case at the cocktail party. We took a cocktail party. <laughs> probably right. I'm very upset with the governor and the attorney general for not calling for a moratorium on this or a moratorium on, on uh, these type of facilities in the state. Everybody knows, everybody knows that the phrase is being bandied around that Alabama's becoming a dumping ground for Northeast trash. I'm not making that up. Everybody's heard that. Everybody assumes that. Why ain't Bob Riley got enough balls to stand up and, and do the right thing? And the process would help us. He's a corporate Republican. It's all about the money. There's money. Now, reg regardless of whether any of these folks I have called or named took took money under the table. That's not the point. There's no, money. No, no. I'm saying about the money involved in all this. Yeah, it's a power brokerage. Yeah, at about least. The money. At least. Yeah. The black belt gets its name because of the black soil. It was good for growing cotton or growing crop, whatever. Just so happens there's a lot of black folks in the black belt. Now, I've made the statement how many times? Forever. Yep. Out of Montgomery. We ain't ever going to get any help in here out of Montgomery. from Not from Republicans, not from Democrats. Because there's no votes to be gained. Bob Riley, Bob Riley may do a moratorium on, on landfills, but it'll be a, a statewide. He won't just pick out and put a moratorium on any more coal ash coming in here. He won't do that because the black folks around here that would appreciate it, they'd really appreciate it if he'd do that. But they ain't going to vote for him if he runs for Congress again, or they ain't going to vote for a Republican uh, running for governor. Now, the, the, uh, if it was a Democrat, if Jim Folsom was, 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 was governor, he wouldn't come in here. Because the white folks ain't gonna vote for him, and the black folks gonna vote for him anyway, so he can sit over there and do nothing, or say he's coming up with a study group, do nothing, and the vote cha the, doesn't change. We're, we're not we're we're a stagnant voting population. So we need to understand more about the nature of this toxic material that's coming in here before we bring in a hundred carloads a day for several years to come. 
Why should Alabama be the dumping ground for the rest of the nation's mistakes?